Okay, so our next speaker is Andreas. Andreas is from the IRT and he's going to talk to us about TTML subtitles and its open source support. Thanks, Christoph. Yeah, thanks to you for coming here on a Sunday morning and uh, also thanks a lot to Christoph and EBU for organizing this lot at FOSTEM. Before I dive into subtitles, some words about my organization, IRT. It's called Institute for Rundfunktechnik, which translates to our something like Institute for Broadcast Technology. And our shareholders are the public broadcasters of Austria, Switzerland, and Germany. Uh, and part of our mission is to help the community develop and adapt new broadcast technology. And it is no surprise that we are participating in technical standardization. We are member of SIMT, DVB, HBBTV, EBU, and W3C, and other standard organizations, and we are actively contributing. For TTML and subtitles, EBU and W3C are most important, because the TTML, the time text markup language, is a W3 standard. Um, it has quite some history. It's mature in a positive sense. It's really stable, and a lot of people have put their work and requirements uh, into the standard. And yes, the major milestone uh, for TTML was 2009, uh, when it was published as candidate recommendation, at that time still as DFXP, and some of you may know that acronym. And unfortunately, they changed it when it reached final recommendation to TTML, and some, still some people do not make the link between DFXP and TTML, but if you see DFXP, this is TTML. So T TTML reached a final recommendation status in 2010, and three years later, there was a, um, a second edition, which mainly brought some clarification, some corrections, uh, but nothing uh, of new features. The most important profiles are probably SIMT time text, EBU, TT, uh, and IMSC1. Um, while SIMT time text may disappear more and more over the next year in favor of IMSC1, um, IMSC1 is really possibly, for, especially for web delivery, um, the most important profile where we can see a conversion of other uh, profiles into uh, IMSC1. So, TTML is XML. I don't know if anybody of you have problems with XML. Uh, seems not the case. I uh, hope so. Um, but in 2003, there was a peak of XML um, popularity, and it was a natural choice to use XML, but over the years, uh, web developers lost their love a bit for uh, XML if there was love <laughs> Uh, in the first place. So there was a foundation of the uh, What WG, um, where browser manufacturers split off W3C and um, developed HTML5 as kind of counter proposal to the XML based HTML. And at the same time, um, they also developed WebVTT, although TTML was already, already finally standardized. Um, so, WebVTT is still uh, favored by the browser community and browser manufacturers, so every time you speak of TTML, you have to speak for, uh, of WebVTT and vice versa also. So the two standards are there uh, and will stay there, although they uh, actually solve the same problem. Um, WebVTT is um, natively supported uh, by browsers and iOS. Um, but TTML is often the choice of content-driven um, organizations like broadcasters, but also Hollywood studios. So TTML may not be natively supported by um, some browser or most browsers, but there are a lot of video players and other frameworks that now support TTML. We see a common trend that standard makers uh, use open source to bring their standards in the market. And the same is true for TTML. Um, 
standard bodies like EBU um, have sponsored or developed certain projects like the uh, EBU TTD integration in DashJS. EBU TTD is a profile of TTML and also a subset of IMC1. Uh, it has also the EBU TT Live Kit uh, kicked off, and our organization um, has put uh, a subtitle conversion framework open source as well as uh, some samples for TTML. Uh, Netflix, who is also pushing uh, IMC1, uh, has sponsored the Time Text Toolkit, um, which is developed by Skynav or in person Glenn Adams, who is the editor of TTML. Uh, and Movie Labs, an organization um, from the Hollywood studios like Disney, Sony, and Universal. Um, they sponsored um, IMSC.js, uh, and this is developed by Pierre Lemieux, which, uh, who's also the editor of IMSC. So I speak about most of the, or all of this uh, open source projects. Um, and I want to go through separate stages of the chain uh, where you can process TTML and I separate into it into production, contribution, distribution, and presentation. And if we start with production, um, the possible most popular open source subtitle editor, subtitle edit supports uh, TTML. Uh, by the way, I put the so main program language and the license of the open source projects as a bullet point. I won't mention them explicitly in my talk, but um, I think it's clear from the slides themselves. So subtitle edit supports TTML. Um, it's nearly standard conform. Uh, it has some problems with, with styles. Uh, so coloring uh, cannot be done in TTML with subtitle edit, uh, but I think if some few issues are fixed, then it's really standard conform. And interestingly, their um, Netflix time text profile is the most standard conform one of TTML. Um, for Netflix time text, it's uh, maybe worth mentioning that this uh, company's specific profile uh, will be deprecated by Netflix uh, in favor of IMSC. So I think for the long run, IMSC will be the profile you have to track. I'm not sure if you know Amara. Amara is a community platform for fan subbing, fan subbing and um, they have an online subtitle editor and they put also their um, tool open source. Um, it has a simple TTML export, the same as subtitle edit. There's a minor bug in it, um, not very um, serious, but if you test against standard conformance, it may fail, uh, but I think it could be easily fixed. So this lot is about web delivery, but TTML actually was um, also developed to support archive uh, and exchange of subtitle files. And um, one uh, open source project um, that yeah, um, can be used in, in this part of the chain is the SCF, the Subtitle Conversion Framework, uh, published by IRT. So we focus on the quite popular uh, broadcast subtitle exchange format EBU STL, um, and we support through XSLT scripts the conversion from STL to an archive format of uh, TTML and then to the distribution format of uh, TTML. So it's actually EBU STL to EBU TT to EBU TTD, which is also IMSC. Um, Okay, so yeah, we mainly use our XML technology there. We use XSLT. Uh, we would have liked to use XSLT too, but because most of the libraries do not support it, uh, we still restrict ourselves to XSLT1. The Time Text Toolkit is a really interesting tool. Um, it has different uh, functions and modules you could use. Uh, it, can validate different TTML profiles. It can generate uh, PNGs and SVGs uh, from TTML. Um, and it already covers some uh, TTML2 features, uh, like Ruby, uh, which you really would like to use if you want um, high-quality Japanese subtitles. 
So time text toolkit is very helpful if you want to integrate your own implementation as a kind of a com complement uh, software tool. And the same is for the EBUTT Live Toolkit, uh, which is um, maintained by um, EBU and also really um, greatly supported and pushed by uh, BBC. Um, the EBUTD Live Toolkit covers the scenario of live co uh, of contribution of streamed subtitles that could be actually live subtitles, but also <coughs> subtitles played from file and streamed. Um, it um, covers the profile EBUTT Live, um, profile of EBUTT, uh, which is now published as 0 0.9, and soon in spring it will be published as 1.0. Um, and um, the current carriage mechanism uh, that is supported is uh, WebSockets, um, and with the EBUTT Live Toolkit, you actually have scripts to simulate a uh, pro producer uh, or consumer node or forward or um, system that forwards the subtitles or encode the subtitles to EBUTDD. So that's very interesting and you should check it out. So for distribution, uh, there have been MP4 box support for TTML for quite some while. Um, they um, enable you to package TTML into MP4. Um, this runs out of the box with EBU TTD, um, but if you use the uh, GPEG specific uh, NHML description language, you could actually use any kind of TTML flavor. Um, the good thing is about MP4 box, that's by, uh, from GPEG, you possibly know this project, they are quite active in MPEG standardization, um, so you can really trust the standard conformance uh, of that implementation. So some, the main or the biggest support for TTML is possibly on the presentation side, and I just pick here uh, three different projects, um, but are, there are more out there. So first, from the standardization, standardization uh, perspective, we found out that the first step for implementation is to have a good reference. Um, and therefore, we published samples uh, of TTML, um, the TTML source code, a video, and reference images, so any implementer uh, can use it. And this has been used by a later project I will, I will show. Um, so VLC player, I think, does not need any uh, introduction. Um, with the latest lightly builds, um, it supports uh, TTML subtitles, possibly also in the official version, I'm not sure, but maybe some of the VLC heads can Which update version me. of VLC player are you speaking about? The, nightly, the latest nightly builds from yesterday. From yesterday? Yes. So this is correct. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> 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 okay, um, so yeah, I, I think that's great, it supports it. Uh, I think it needs some more support of features like colors and styling features, but it's it's really good, really good start. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind that you have to uh, rename your files to txt um, because for some reason uh, the XML extension uh, is not supported. But uh, maybe uh, we can uh, can figure it out later. One of the most promising open source projects from my perspective currently is IMC.js, uh, which is a, a renderer of TTML uh, to HTML5. It's, of course, uh, written in JavaScript. Um, and it, I think, nearly covers all of IMC1. Uh, and if something is missing, that's because of uh, missing supports in CSS, because some of the requirements we have for subtitles are actually not met by uh, some of the CSS uh, features. So just to uh, show you how easy it is to use that, uh, once you have your um, XML file loaded in, it, uh, in an XML string, you can use the from XML message from IMC, from the IMC object, and then you get back a TTML object. Uh, and the TTML object has a 
other function that gives you all media times. It are the times where subtitle presentation changes. Um, and by going through this array, uh, you can generate a snapshot, a representation of the TTML document for that specific time. Um, this is called in TTML language an intermediate synchronic document. Uh, I just call it snapshot here. Um, and then if you have a DOM node where you want to insert your um, subtitle TTML, uh, HTML, um, yeah, you just give it to the render HTML a function of IMSC, get it the snapshot and the DOM node and inserts it under the DOM node uh, and render it there. So I think it's quite easy really to use it and it has really a good coverage and it's very standard conformant. Okay, so in summary, we can see a broad support of TTML through open source projects. And I think it's just some tweaking needed. Um, to uh, yeah, get the full, yeah, the full advantage of that. Um, and what uh, we have seen from testing different open source projects, um, they may need some, or there is a need that standard makers also support some open source projects they're not affiliated with, uh, with test material and bug reports. And I think then, um, I think their adoption will even speed up more. Okay, so the slides are all on um, the FOSDEM sites. If you have problems, there uh, have been uh, an issue with the file extension of the PDF slides, but this should be fixed today. So um, I put just the links up here, just for recording. So the most of them, of course, are on GitHub. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. So we have time for quite a few questions, actually. Is there any? Uh, you were mentioning the four box um, that it's um, standard conform and um, uh, handles all the features. Um, I was uh, step testing that a little bit a while ago, and um, at least for um, IMSC1, it was not creating a standard conform um, screen. Okay. At this point, mm -hmm. you probably have to be a bit careful and just check what the output is. Yeah. But, uh, they're all uh, GitHub pages for that. Yeah. Okay, the question was um, if MP4 box is really standard conform because um, the colleague had problems in um, packaging IMC1 or the text, the image profile of IMC1. So he said that you may need a bit uh, um, careful uh, with this current uh, status. Um, yes, as I said, if you want to use another profile like EBUTDD, you have to go through this H A A NHML description language, so it won't work out of the box. Uh, I checked yesterday uh, with a colleague, Roman from, uh, from GPAC, and he said, yeah, okay, you can use IMC, but you have to use NHML. Uh, I, we didn't do it ourselves, we mostly focus on EBUTDD. Uh, and there's an ISO standard, 14496-30, that defines how our TTML should be packaged. And with EBUTD, they do it quite right. But you are right, so that we looking forward to more support of other profiles. It makes it easier um, to use it uh, yeah, with this profile. Other questions? Uh, mm -hmm. well, this place, uh, okay. Sorry? What's the profile? What's the profile? Okay, that, that's a good question. Um, it's a, let, let's say uh, it's a derivation of the base TTML. TTML, it's uh, very big, so it's more like a toolkit. So you won't use all of it. But because everybody from every region in the world puts their requirements into this, prof in this TTML, um, they won't use all of it. So they subsetted it. Um, and put little extension to it sometimes, which will be later integrated into TTML. So in the main profile, as I said, are EBUTT uh, and IMSC. There's also SIMPTTT still, and still plays role because it's um, also mentioned by uh, US legislation. 
Uh, and there have been also CFFTT, which is a common file format time text, uh, but this, I think, is also deprecated in favor of um, IMSC. Um, I wanted to ask, is there any support in uh, FTPML for um, breaking up the subtitles differently depending on the screen size? So a mobile screen might not like to have a really long subtitle on it. Okay, the question was if TTML has a feature to adapt to the screen size, so you have the lengths automatically adapt um, to it. Um, yes and no. Uh, um, you, I, you can think of it as a feature set based on HTML. I think actually they are really based on, on the same, um, yeah, on the same styling, uh, styling feature set. And of course you can set um, wrap as option for, for text. So you do not put any line breaks in, it will just wrap uh, accordingly. And you can use percentage, which you should use for the font size. So the font size adapts dynamically and um, responsive to the screen size. Um, but the thing is that um, subtitles actually put line breaks in there for, for a reason. So, and they are very fond of the line breaks. Um, so there are some um, um, tools or features where you can um, yeah, expect TTML adapt automatically to the screen size, but actually if you really want a high quality subtitle, you may have to pre-process them before. We have time for one last question. Do any of your delivery options work on iOS? Okay, the question was uh, if any of the delivery options work on iOS, yes. Uh, if you build an app, um, <laughs> 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 which is done. Uh, so the so German broadcaster, so the German broadcaster have a really good archive for their um, um, video on demand content, uh, which supports EBUTT or which is a simple profile of TTML. Uh, works fine. Uh, they have players. Uh, they work on it. It has some problems if you go full screen, but that's because of the native support of uh, other formats. Um, so yeah, you, you can you can use uh, TTML on iOS, but uh, you have to build your own uh, code around it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>